Now I gotta tell you, cause I'm gonna show you right here. Because it has eight cores, 16 threads. <laughs> No! This is the best CPU and motherboard for AMD Radeon 6800 XT guide. The only way to get the most out of AMD Radeon 6800 XT is to use AMD Ryzen CPU. In order to use AMD Ryzen CPU, you need a motherboard that supports AMD Ryzen. So today, we're gonna answer three questions. First, why do you need AMD CPU for a brand new Radeon graphics card? What CPU? You would make Radeon 6800 XT a happy camper. Which motherboard is the best? And finally, what DDR4 sticks of memory you need to look for? So that's one, two, three. Never mind. Total of four questions today. Four. Why are we doing this? Well, delays in shipping and parts availability is troublesome. So let's figure out what we need to figure out and start building. Like everything else we do on this channel, all the selections for the products have budget in mind. I don't want you to spend a penny more if you can save a penny less. Therefore, absolute best price to performance PC component selection. You know what else is best component selection? <laughs> this community. Why don't you smash that subscribe button so we can all laugh together at yours truly. Did I just make fun of myself? Why AMD CPU? Two reasons. Reason number one. PCIe Gen 4, Ryzen 3000 series and Ryzen 5000 series of CPU are the only ones that provide that support. Gen 4 has doubled the bus of Gen 3 which helps to push more data through PCIe port. Horizon Zero Dawn is the only game that could really benefit from the technology at the moment. Also, we explored the fact of enabling Gen 4 PCIe on the cheapest A320 motherboard in this video. Reason number two. Pairing Ryzen 5000 series CPU and Radeon 6800X XT unlocks a very cool technology. AMD calls it Infinity Cache that delivers twice the memory bandwidth. Twice or not? All we need to know, it helps the performance and only available when pairing with Ryzen 5000 series CPU and PCI Gen 4 capable motherboard. Price increase of 5000 series processors could justify choosing 3000 series CPU, which brings us... What CPU I need? Now I gotta tell you, cause I'm gonna show you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you the champions of TSMC and Global Foundry Factories. On the left corner, the best, cheapest 4-core CPU, Ryzen 3 3100. On the right corner, the best-selling CPU on the planet, Ryzen 5 3600. And right down, snack in the middle, the monster of the mainstream PC components, 12 core, 24 threads, Ryzen 9 3900X. And I am your host, George the Purple Pants, the master. 1440p is what everyone and their mother wants, quite literally. Horizon Zero Dawn, Ryzen 3 68 FPS average, Ryzen 5 69 FPS. Nice. 3D Mark Time Spy graphics score. Ryzen 3 9229, Ryzen 5 9290. Other games show similar results to Horizon Zero Dawn. Ryzen 9 is the king. Ryzen 5 is the best for the money. Ryzen 3 is incredible for the price. Also, none of the games complain too much about the lack of extra cores. Hmm, I wonder why. Because game developers have Xbox and PlayStation in mind. PS4 has very outdated 4-core silicon. PS5 and an Xbox X Series XXX have custom AMD 8-core CPU. Having that logic in mind, the only future-proofed CPU is Ryzen 7. Because it has 8 cores, 16 threads. <laughs> No! Fast 4 cores is always better than slow 8 cores. 3 reasons to support it. Number 1. They get you on the clock speed and boosting. What I didn't tell you. All the CPUs running tests today were clocked at 3900 MHz. If I let 3900X boost, it would get right ahead. Number two, Windows. It's not a real-time operating system, meaning if it needs to look for update or create a backup file, it's just gonna do it without asking. Having more cores is better in this instance since some of the OS workload can be unloaded to these extra cores. Reason number three, four cores have to mix in OS and game 
tasks into the cycles. So it's more difficult life. In return, high horsepower Radeon 6800 XT ends up waiting on the CPU. Unless it's 4K. Hmm? Check out results from Horizon Zero Dawn in 4K. Pro gamers never choose 4K. 4K introduces input latency and lower the frames. 4K gaming is what I would do because I'm a casual gamer. Having that in mind, casual gamers, Ryzen 3, video encoding and gaming, Ryzen 5 at least. Twitch streamers, Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9, since they have to run OBS as well. My personal choice is Ryzen 5 3600. This is why it's been the best selling CPU because of me. Motherboard. Choose the cheapest 500 series with VRM heatsink. And look at all the features you need, like amount of SATA ports and good audio and amount of NVMe slots and so on and so forth. But most importantly, make sure VRM gets cooling. This is VRM. This is VRM with cooling. Ryzen 3 or Ryzen 5 would feel safe with any board. Ryzen 9, on the other hand, this is 12 core Ryzen 9 3900X paired with the cheap A520 motherboard. The MOSFETs get crazy hot, so no good. Another example is MSI MPG X570 Gaming Plus. This board has a heatsink right here. VRM has nice temps thanks to that heatsink. However, controller is not doing so well. But if you want a good board for Ryzen 9, watch this video. Big DR for memory. IHS is the metal thing with the Ryzen written on it. It's covering cores and IO die. IO die has a technology called Infinity Fabric. Clocks on the memory and clocks on Infinity Fabric need to match for the best results. Higher the clocks of the memory, better results you get. But everything above 1800 is hit or miss, meaning memory gets expensive and Infinity Fabric starts starts failing on the hot temperatures. So DDR, double data rate, double of 1800 megahertz is, if you said 3500, you're right. DDR4 3600 megahertz is the best, cheapest memory for Ryzen 3000 series CPU. We'll revisit when Ryzen 5000 drops. While you're waiting for Ryzen 5000 Radeon 6800 XT, have fun watching this video. Don't click this one, click this one. Thank you so much, Texters. I see your comments and I just want to say thank you for being part of this community. Love ya.